When you are talking about uh, research ethics, uh, one of the most important principles that comes up, and you'll see this coming up in all the different ethics codes, the APA ethics code, the Nuremberg code, the uh, Belmont report, they all talk about the idea that as researchers, uh, we, we try to do no harm. Or on the, on the flip side of this, we try to do good. And sometimes you'll see, there are terms you'll see with this, you'll see beneficence is a term that you'll sometimes see in these ethics codes. Or on the other side of this, you'll see non-maleficence. Maleficence means doing doing harm. So non-maleficence maleficence is just a fancy way of saying do no harm. And beneficence is the idea of doing good. So this is just, these are just fancier ways of saying the same thing. Now, one part of this that's not entirely realistic the way it's phrased is the idea of doing no harm. Uh, if you think about everyday life, there's some risk when you go around about your just everyday life, there's a risk of you being harmed. Now, if you think about bringing people into a research uh, environment where you're doing research on something that isn't fully understood, there's almost certainly going to be at least there's going to be the risk that they encounter in everyday life, and there's quite possibly going to be uh, some unforeseen risk that, that you weren't quite aware of because you didn't understand the thing that you're studying. That's why you're studying it. So the idea of, if you, if you do a lot of research and you bring in a lot of participants in your career, the idea of never hurting anyone, even in the slightest way, or putting them at any risk, is not realistic. Uh, so a more realistic way of phrasing this would be to say that we are trying very hard to minimize, minimize risk. Oops, risk. Wow, that's terrible. Let me rewrite that. To minimize risk. And you are trying to, to on the flip side, you are trying to maximize benefit. And this is something that, that you can view as a sort of a balance where you are, you are I'm going to say, weighing these two sides. Uh, you're trying to see, do the risks or costs, sometimes we talk about this as a cost-benefit ratio. Do the, do, which side outweighs the other? Do the costs or risks outweigh the benefits or do the benefits outweigh the costs? Uh, so, for example, if you were doing some medical research, there are times where you might, on this side of, of things, you might be thinking of a treatment that is potentially potentially lethal. So there's something that you're going to try on your patients, and there is a chance that it could go wrong and kill them. Uh, for example, with uh, early research in gene therapy, uh, there is a high chance of the treatment killing the patient. On the other hand, some, some of these patients are coming in with terminal illnesses or with things that are so unpleasant and painful and debilitating that the benefit might be something like, you know, the possible benefit would be uh, a possible cure of a maybe a terminal, terminal illness. So in that case, the risk is very high, but the potential benefit is even higher. Um, so you weigh these risks and benefits, and you try to see which one is greater. Um, in terms of psychology, I'll, I'll give you another example. When I was doing research as a student in one of my professor's labs, uh, we were testing a new uh, anti-anxiety uh, something we thought might might have uh, properties of, of reducing anxiety. We weren't sure. But of course, if you want to test this, you need to induce anxiety in the lab. So basically, we would, on the, on the risk or cost side, we would stress, intentionally stress the participants out. And we, we would do this by making them do uh, come up with an impromptu speech or, or have to do difficult math problems out loud. And if they made a mistake doing these problems, they would have to start all over. It was potentially embarrassing and, uh, and, and definitely a stressful experience. Uh, 
On the other, you know, so that's the that's the risk, that's the cost. On the benefit side, the argument is that we might potentially discover discover a new uh, way to reduce anxiety and you know if this were a very effective treatment uh, maybe it could be used for hundreds thousands or even millions of people so uh, my professor and the institutional review board that looked over her work said we think that that potential benefit is worth uh, the moderate stress that the participants undergo when they go through this but again, this is this is not a black and white thing. This is because you don't always know exactly what harm might come of something and what benefits might come of something. So you need to uh, use your best understanding uh, possible to estimate the level of risk and the level of potential benefit and weigh those things. Now, one thing that you can do to try to uh, offset some of the potential damage that's done if you're doing something like stressing out the participants, particularly, so, so this may not be so much of an issue in a medical uh, situation where you have fully disclosed to the participant, here's all the risk that you're going to go through. Um, and the participant says, yes, that's worth it to me because I've got this terminal illness. But certainly in a psychological experiment, especially if deception is involved, where in this case we stressed the participants out, but we didn't really tell them why, we didn't tell them exactly what was happening. Um, in, in a situation like that, an especially important tool to use is, let me grab a different color here. An especially important tool to use is what we call a debriefing. So at the end of your study, you want to do a debriefing with your participants. Uh, and this is where you would, you would fully explain exactly what happened in the study. Um, the idea is you want the, I'm going to say you want the participant to leave the study where they are uh, fully, fully informed of what happened and what it meant. So in the example of the study I, I took part in where I intentionally was stressing, uh, you know, inducing anxiety in the participants, one of the most important things for me as one of the research assistants was to sit with the uh, participants briefly after the study was done, after they had gone through and, and done all the tasks, to sit with them and say, this is exactly what we were doing. We were testing this uh, drug that we thought would potentially reduce anxiety. And uh, to do that, it was necessary for us to put you in some situations that were stressful. And uh, and and the idea here is we're we're trying to I'm going to say we're we're checking we're checking on the well being and trying to trying to ensure the well being of the participant. Um, we're trying to check if they were harmed, if they were harmed in any way, and do anything we can to. Uh, counteract that were they physically hurt or psychologically hurt in any way and uh, in some cases you would want to even potentially direct them to a counselor that would be rare that would probably be I mean if you've done your if you've done your work in setting up the study well and caring for the participants and protecting them in the way that you should uh, actually getting to the point where they need to go and talk to a counselor should be very rare but you definitely want to be prepared to do that. You want to have a, you know that the contact information for a counselor on hand if you're doing uh, any kind of study where there's a significant risk for psychological stress or or or, or damage to be done. Um, so in this case, though, I would sit with the participants. I would fully explain what had happened, why they had been put in these stressful situations, and also make sure to tell them things uh, that we thought might be. Uh, helpful to to them in terms of you know maybe they had thought that these were tests of their ability or their intelligence in some way and so part of the debriefing was to reassure them that these were these were intentionally meant to be difficult and stressful tasks and that we would not expect anyone to be able to do them well uh, so that we reduce any kind of anxiety that might be uh, lingering uh, around the idea of, I, I didn't do a good job, I'm a failure, anything like that. 
So the debriefing is an opportunity, especially when you've done any kind of deception or when there was substantial risk in the study, the debriefing is a chance to try to offset that. But the, the main ideas here are that we are trying to do no harm, we're trying to do good, that that is not uh, always possible to just do in a very black and white way. If we want to get to some good research, to some potential benefits to people, we may need to go through uh, the risk of doing harm. So to get to the benefit, we have to sort of go through that risk, uh, but we need to very carefully weigh that We'll also talk about the idea that we need to very, uh, be very careful about informing the participants of that risk in advance, and that's what we'll talk about in the next video. Um, and then we need to do anything we can afterward, after the study is, is done, with the debriefing to try to maximize that good and minimize that harm and hopefully have the participant leaving at least as good and as good a condition as they came in and preferably better um, at the very minimum, to have the satisfaction of knowing I had an interesting experience and I helped to advance uh, scientific knowledge.